Hi, I'm Dr. Bernard Omedy and I would like to tell you about a major advance in the low cost storage of potable water. Millions of people in Africa do not have access to clean drinking water during the dry season. Current methods for the collection and storage of rainwater during the wet season are too expensive for low income farmers. The African Rainwater Revolution Bladder is a low cost approach to the storage of rainwater for drinking and it may one day be available to millions of people in arid and semi-arid regions of Africa. The World Agro Forestry Centre in Nairobi, Kenya is coordinating the African Rainwater Revolution whereby farm ponds are being constructed for thousands of villages in Africa. The ponds are used to store rainwater runoff during the wet season so that water is available for irrigation during the dry season. The ponds have a plastic liner that needs to be protected from damage by animals and so the pond provides an ideal location for the installation of the African Rainwater Revolution Bladder. Back in Adelaide, South Australia, the city of Port Adelaide Enfield has made the bark inlet wetlands available for research trials to test the bladder. The current prototype for the bladder can store up to 3,500 litres of drinking water. When the bladder is full, it is a cylinder, 1.7 metres in diameter and 1.5 metres high. Because the bladder is located in a pond, the dirty water in the pond supports the clean water in the bladder, and so the bladder can be made from plastic only half a millimetre thick. The bladder is similar to a tank liner without the tank. The current prototype weighs only 6 kilograms, and so the cost of manufacture and transport to the village is substantially reduced. When it rains, clean water drains into the bladder. The bladder is submerged in the pond, but because the bladder is sealed, the dirty water in the pond cannot contaminate the clean water in the bladder. When the water level in the bladder becomes higher than the water level in the pond, the bladder will start to bulge and eventually the bladder will burst. A special overflow valve floats on the surface of the pond to ensure that the difference in water level between the water in the bladder and the water in the pond is never more than a predefined value. As the difference in water levels approaches this value, water will start to overflow from the valve into the pond. A 20 watt solar panel is connected to a 14 watt pump at the bottom of the bladder. So when the sun's out and shining on the solar panel, you can see the water being pumped up from the bladder into the holding tank. When the holding tank is full, there's a float switch on the side of the holding tank. I'll just operate the float switch so you can see how it works. When the water raises, rises to this level, that comes up and turns the water off. And then as the water is used for whatever purpose, and the level goes down, then the float switch goes down, and then the water comes on again. So there's always a supply of drinking water. Uh, in the holding tank so you can get the water as you need it. So when you want to take some water from the holding tank just turn on the tap and then take the water that you need and turn off the tap. The pump at the bottom of the bladder is pumping the water up to fill this container. I'm now going to test the water to make sure that it's uh, nice clean drinking water. For this prototype I'm using a large tarpaulin 9 meters by 7.2 meters to collect the rainwater for the bladder. The tarpaulin is supported by four steel poles, one at each corner, and two ratchet tie-down straps are attached to each pole. The rain drains through a hole in the center of the tarpaulin and it is then piped to the bladder. This method of collecting rainwater is not designed to withstand wind gusts greater than 30 kilometers per hour. Each of the tie-down straps is connected to a stake via a loop of fishing line with a specified braking strain. When the tarpaulin is blown down by the wind, the fishing line is designed to break before any damage is done to the tarpaulin. It is then a simple matter to replace the broken fishing line and to re-erect the tarpaulin. The extra heavy-duty tarpaulin costs 300 Australian dollars. 
In the village situation, I recommend that the tarpaulin should only be erected when rain is expected and the expected wind speed is less than 30 km per hour. If no further rain is expected for several days, then I recommend that the tarpaulin is taken down and left on the ground so that it can be quickly erected when the next rainfall is expected. To ensure that the rainwater collected is potable, you may need to clean the tarpaulin before it is reused. As the storage capacity of the bladder increases, the cost per litre will become less and less. This is because the cost of the plastic to manufacture the bladder is proportional to the surface area of the bladder rather than the volume. I am seeking comments and suggestions so that the African Rainwater Revolution Bladder and Associated Rainwater Collection can meet the needs of poor farmers. Climate change will expose millions of people in Africa to increased water stress and so it is important to act now. A detailed report on the current status of the research is available to anyone interested. If you would like more information, please send me an email. Thank you.